they go. Explosive matter hits the Colonial easily. Underway. Well, hello there, Kimasabi. Welcome to another installment of the show we like to call PA Harness Week. Why do we call it that? Why not? Yeah, I, I think that's a good question. Why do we call it that? Because we're hot to trot today. Okay, there you go. That's and we got some, we, besides trite little one-liners, we also have a heck of a show for you today. Why? Because we're so going to go to Canada. We're going to see the Canadian, Canadian Pacing Derby Pacing Finals, Derby. the best two-year-old Colts in the country in the Metro. We're going to see the Cane Pace, the Shady Daisy. I'm on Pacing Overfill here, darling. We've got everything on the show except one thing. What's that, babe? Charla. Charla who? Oh, Charla! <laughs> that's your little blonde. Yes. Yes. I heard she got hitched to a sulky. She got no, hitched. No, no, no. I don't think it was a sulky. It was a guy. Tall, good looking guy. And his name is Todd. Even though Todd was the name on Saturday Night Live, they used to make fun of us being the nerdy guy. <laughs> this Todd ain't a nerdy guy, believe me. This guy is an athlete. And he scored our Charla. And now they're hitched. And now they're vacationing in Riviera Maya as we speak. And Charla and Todd, we wish you nothing but a lifetime of being in love and lots of happiness. But do me a favor, babe. Do not change your name. Don't go the hyphenated route. Because, quite frankly, if we had to go to the hyphenated route with you, darling, we'd have to buy another half hour of airtime. <laughs> oh, don't get me started. You are the pot called the kettle black. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. I want to talk about racing. You well, do? sorry. Did that you? just gave me a good reason to Don't hit you. mess up my <laughs> tablecloth shirt, babe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, should I start? Why don't you just start? Okay, I might as well because you've done enough talking. Let's go to Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. They hosted a leg of the GSY Summer Amateur Pacing Series, a really neat traveling series. They started in Saratoga. They, they're going to um, uh, the Meadowlands. They went to the Meadowlands. They're at Pocono. They went to Tioga. Yada, anyway, yada. Just to clear, the drivers are amateurs, but it doesn't mean they're inexperienced. Amateur only means that they give up their 5% driving uh, fee. Like, you know how Tim Tietrich has made like a gazillion dollars this year? Well, no, he, he made a gazillion years ago. He's yeah, made yeah. a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps that 5%. He's a pro. If you're an amateur, maybe you've driven a lot, but you're going to give that 5% away. And this is what makes the series really cool is the 5% along with a couple of other different fees, you know, paid by the connections in the series. It goes to charity and towards scholarships. So it's been a really great series. And like I said, this time it was a Mohegan Sun at Pocono Down. The leg of it was in the Edition number three, Ruthless Ace, was the one to do favor and had just won a leg of the series at Tioga last time out. The nine-year-old pacer cut the mile in 155 and one with driver Monica Banka in the sulky. Danger Sign was second. Donnie Bop was third. The series ends at the end of this month, September, so good luck to everybody in the series. Monica Banka, a future star in this game, okay? Sled Stable, he can sign up Pocono Downs. These guys are going to get paid for driving, okay? It was race 12, the feature on Saturday, and it was a condition pace for non winners of 24000 bucks in their last five starts. In other words, high-class horse flesh. Number six, Mears Hanover from the Ron Burke barn with Matt DeCaley was the even-money chalk. Number five, Mickey Hanover, five to two with Andy. Anthony Napolitano, number one, Towns Light Hanover with Andrew McCarthy was four to one. And here's the call. Mustang Art Motorin on the front end. Pocket trip, perfect trip early on for Mickey Hanover, but now Townslight Hanover sensing weakness in the leader, coming up first over. Following that move is Shark ingested into fourth. Mears Hanover, all kinds of boxed in, needs room to roam. Third over, sixth for Sato, and then Art Ake Hanover. Mustang Art clings to the lead, three quarters, 121 and 127 and three on the back. It's still Mustang Art. Mickey Hanover is poised there in the pocket. Downs light, Hanover outside, three wide, Shark ingested. Top of the stretch, Mustang Art has the edge. Mickey Hanover now out of the pocket. Mears Hanover has room, but it's still Mustang Art with the lead. As Gomer Paul would say, surprise, surprise, surprise. I know what you young folks out there are saying right now, you little guppies. Gomer who? 
<laughs> anyway, trust me, the surprise thing, it's applicable here. Number three, Mustang Art, an eight to one shot with Kevin Wallace, wired in 148 and three. Mickey Hanover got a perfect pocket trip, but couldn't threaten the winner and had to settle for being second best. Mears Hanover rambled home a mere third. And when we come back, we're gonna have more action from Wigan, son of Pocono Downs, and you'll get to meet the driver who just won the race you just saw, Kevin Wallace. So why would you even think about going anywhere? Feel the action. Get a taste of victory. Spice things up. And play to win. Get it! Mohegan Sun, Off Track Wagering. Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. Hello there you, welcome back to PA Harness Week. Along with Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross. And as promised, a driver who's making great inroads up in Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs. The guy's name is Kevin Wallace, and you saw him win the last race in sub-150 time. This guy's got it going on. And our Kelly Connors caught up with him. Thanks, Heather and Steve. We're here with driver Kevin Wallace from north of the border, originally from Canada. Uh, Kevin, give us some background on yourself and how you first got involved in the sport of harness racing. Uh, I bought my first horse when I was 12, and... Uh, been doing it pretty much ever since. Oh, so you started out as a trainer then, I understand? Yes. Okay, do you still train? Yes. Oh gosh, so how many do you have in the barn? Uh, two right now. Okay, great. So what led to you moving here uh, to Pennsylvania to drive? Uh, the money is uh, so much better here than it is. Uh, I race in Florida in the wintertime, and uh, in, in Canada things are not good, so I just thought I'd give it a try here. You still have family up there? Uh, my son is there. Yes. But he does not drive? No. no. Okay. <laughs> so how did your colors come about? Are these family colors? Uh, I don't know. I picked them out at an early age and I stuck with them. So you've had a lot of big drives throughout your career. Um, talk to us about maybe your most memorable, the one that sticks out in your mind, or a certain horse. Uh, Burning Point uh, won the Breeders' Crown uh, in 2003 at Meadowlands, and that, that was a real highlight. And... Uh, I had a lot of nice horses like Robitaille. Uh, he, he made almost a million dollars that, that I owned myself, and uh, he has a special place. Uh, I've had, you know, been lucky owning some very nice horses over the years, and uh, it's nice uh, to uh, get 100% instead of 5%. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, you have a lot of career wins under your belt, over 9,000. You're closing in. On the 10,000 mark, that's an elite club. Uh, how does it feel to have accomplished so much throughout your career? I feel very fortunate that uh, a lot of uh, good trainers and owners have, uh, you know, been behind me and used me, and, uh, and uh, owe a lot of credit to those people. Nice. Well, thank you so much. We wish you luck the rest of the season. Thank you, Kelly. Okay. Send it back to you guys. Thank you, Kay, and thank you, Kay, for Kevin and Kelly. And continued success up at Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs, where we stay for Saturday's eighth race. And the lovely, talented, and vivacious Heather Vitale has got that bad boy for you. Oh, that's so nice for making up for, like, all the mean things you said to me earlier in the show. <laughs> all right, no, I'm just kidding. No winner is 18,000 in the last five. The first is 19,000. I'm just going to point out a couple horses in here who are getting the most support. Number two is Muscles from Brussels. After a lifetime mark in 149 and one um, a few starts back, he's been letting the betters down. He's been the beaten favorite his last couple of starts, but the fans still have faith in him, okay? He is the favorite again in here, but he's taking a step down in class. Number four is a rock in the house at two to one. Race huge last time out was the beaten favorite, but he was so big it was heartbreaking. Um, but uh, after a big effort, here he is, second choice. Rock in the house still has the lead. Reckless Rick, a nifty bit of driving there by McCarthy, was able to swing that one into the pocket and get some cover. Then you've got Joe DeFino. Now bet on the law makes his move with the win there for Pavia. He's within two and he's gaining. Outside, here we go again. Has been out there a while. Must Brussels from Brussels needs more pick me up there. Further back, Art of Illusion, Mosey Terror. Three quarters, 122 and four, 27 and two there on the back. On the outside, bet on the law, just about on even terms with Rock in the House. Inside, Reckless Rick waiting to pounce. 
further back there to Muscles from Brussels and Art of Illusion from far back. Top of the stretch. It's still rocking the house. Outside, bet on the law, all out trying to get to him. Rocking the house, slight lead. Bet on the law starts to fade. Rocking the house. Rocking the house, or as I like to call him, rocking the his house. Jams out, cuts the mile in 150 and one. Wins by two lengths with Matt Kikaley in the bike. For trainer Ron Burke, muscles from Brussels. We both say we love that name, right? Yeah, great name. He was second and bet, bet on the law took third. So he disappointed the fans again. <laughs> that, right? Okay. You are just all kinds of insulting horses and people I don't people want to be today. cynical, but don't you, <laughs> you set it up by saying the horse disappoints the betters and he continues pattern. I'm just saving the obvious. Okay, now, and we'll get set up Pocono Downs. Race 10 was for preferred trotters, two late scratches, reduced the field to eight. Number one, DW's NY Yank was one to two with Matt Kikaley. Number six, the beat goes on, Hanover was three to one with Tyler Buter. Number four, from above, with Andrew McCarthy, was a beautiful three to one. And now, here's the call. DW's NY Inc. and Matt Kakali the lead about a length. Now Real Babe launching first over for George Knapp and making a good go of it here. Inside beat goes on Hanover still staying right with the leader in the pocket. From above with that live cover has moved up to about two and a quarter away on the outside. Money on my mind's just two back but no room to roam right now and Fort Valley Oz outside. Three and three out. They've all got a shot. Three quarters. 124 even. 28 and three third panel. And on the outside Real Babe is even with DW's NY Yank. Beat goes on. Hanover looking for a second move further back to from above. Top of the stretch. DW's NY Yank. Real Babe. A slight lead now. Real Babe takes over. Inside. DW's NY Yank. Outside. Beat goes on. Hanover surging. Beat goes on. Hanover. DW's NY Yank grabbed the lead before the half and just cruised to the stretch when he got passed by both the winner. Beat goes on. Hanover. And number three. Real Babe off at 8-1 with Georgie Napa was second. DW's NY Yank settled for third time of the mile, funny you should ask. 151 and four. Stick around, stay with us because guess what? We're coming right here to Harris, Philadelphia because a former winner of the Hamiltonian will be racing right here. In the house, come away. Market share set off the three to five favorite, ducked into the fourth position. When it's your time to shine, what will you do? At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Hello there, Harness Racing fans, and welcome back to PA Harness Week. I want to mention something before we get back to the races, and that is the folks got to stay there till the end of the show because big doings, they can win a, an incredible amount of great prizes just by tuning in right here. Don't go anywhere. You'll hear about it at the end of the show, okay? All right. All nice right. plug. Cool. All right. Now, right here at Harris, Philadelphia on Thursday, a Hamiltonian champion was in the house. And Heather's going to tell you all about it. I do. It was in the big trot we've got here with a purse of $30,000. Number eight is market share, as you mentioned, previous Hamiltonian winner. Now, remember, he won that qualifier in 115 through. Remember that qualifier? So everybody sort of thought that he was going to be the first sub 150 trotter. Uh, now, he's only won one start out of his last four races. However, the fans not losing in losing faith. He is the favorite here at three to five. But number seven is Sevruga. This horse has had like some big, 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 big efforts this year. He's had nine wins against really tough horses. And then there's number five, my MVP, lately race, but he was the Kentucky Fraternity winner last year. Do you remember that? Yep. And um, he knows how to race against these big guns. Market share set off the three to five favorite, ducked into the fourth position. And he's five lengths off the lead through a 27 second first quarter. Passing us on the first occasion, Savruga's driven on. To take charge, and my MVP yields willingly to the pocket with a circuit to go. Savruga's now two in front. 
by MVP Yildred in second, and Sir Winston tracks from third. Market share still biding his time, but he's six and a half lengths off to lead with a half mile to go. Where to Hanover has eight to make up, followed by definitely Mamie, and the trailer is Lightning Storm through a 54 and four fifth seconds half mile. Up the back stretch, Savrugas on a front trotting mission and two clear of my MVP with three eighths to go. Market shares gaining on them now. Market share took over third. He's up within four and a half lengths of the lead at the five sixteenths and just a length and three quarters out of second. Where two Hanover's up into fourth, but six lengths behind Market Share. It's two more to Lightning Storm swinging three wide to pass definitely Mamie and Sir Winston dropped out last. Three quarters in one twenty three and two, and they're closing in on Savruga in the final three hundred yards. Savruga Ruga a length and a quarter in front from my MVP who angled wide. Market shares carry to the three path to give chase and he's called upon for his best right now. Down to the 150. Savruga's under an all-out drive. His lead is cut to a neck. My MVP lunging at him. Market share just won pace. Here's the line. My MVP wins. My MVP leaves hard, gets to the front, but then yields to Savruga after they get by the stands. You know, at this point, market share, he's sitting fourth, but, you know, you can see by the time they reach the three-quarter pole, market share's already made his move and by then it's pretty much just like a three horse race now I thought that my MVP was going to wait for the passing lane okay that's why I'm sitting here and not in a sulky okay that's why like that's why. yeah that's why <laughs> there's professionals like Yannick Jingra he knows how much horse he has he does not wait for the passing lane he pulls that right line they go by Sevruga end up winning in 152 and 2 and they pay 1160 Sevruga was second market share picked up third okay next Next up, two-year-old trotting fillies on display here at Harris Philly on Friday. 84,000 bucks on the line in each one. The first is race two, where number three, honor thy daughter, something I've always practiced twice in my life. Off a of two-to-one with Yang Jingra, got the money, winning in 157 for Jimmy Tactor. Number two, Global Magic, a five-to-two shot with Dave Miller, got the belly. Number six, Juanita Hanover, a slight nine-to-five chalk, got third. On to race number five, another pass race here. Number three, Cooler, Schooner. Now, she's a favorite here with good reason, coming off a 151 and three mile at Pocono, okay, which is the fastest mile ever in history by a two-year-old trotter, male or female, on any size track. So this filly is known for being fast, and she's known for misbehaving, but she does not disappoint in here. She trots from wire to wire, 154 and two to win by a head with driver John Campbell in the bike, designed to be with second, and a perfect gem was third. In the eighth race, the third division number four, lifetime pursuit off at one to a gazillion with Yannick Jingra won it in 157 and three. Number three, Anonymy Hanover, I guess they were out of all the good names. Off at 60 to one with Maggie Cayley was second. Number seven, Ruby with Marcus Miller, a 20 to one shot, got third. Now, here's the kicker. Only seven horses in the race. The one to nine shot won it. So if you bought the race with the chalk and the trifecta, you got back 325 bucks. And that ain't chopped liver. Now, in the super, $1,149. Just take the horse that's like one to 20 on top with everybody underneath. Even the 4-3 exacta returned $52.80. Pretty nuts, huh? Okay, who said you can't make money in this game, folks? Stay with us when we come back. We're going to go up north, catch the Canadian Pacing Derby final, the Metro final, and as they say some of the hoods, a whole lot more. A rock and roll dance is up on the outside now as Teachers calling on him to sprint from in third. Tonight, it's ladies' night. The lights are low, and the stakes are high. Sometimes ladies' night is just a date night in disguise. At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Right, folks, for all of you trying to figure out what it's all about, we're going to go up to a great organization up there. It's called the Mohawk uh, Raceway, you know, up in Canada. Hey, you know what I mean? Why are you talking like a German person? That's a German person? I thought that was a good French-Canadian accent. What's up with you, girlfriend? It's not French-Canadian. No? no. 
know. What kind of Canadian was it? It's like regular Toronto Canadian. Toronto Canadian? <laughs> I've never heard of that before. <laughs> Toronto Canadian? I don't. Okay. I, and I thought I spoke fluent Toronto Canadian. But anyway, they had a couple of great major stakes races taking place. The first we'll look at is the Canadian Pacing Derby, and here's the lovely and confused Heather with that one. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm a little bit confused, but I'm not confused about this race. The first $600,000. This is like a field of 10 superstars that I really want to say something about every one of them, but I know my boss, Bruce Casella, behind the camera is doing one of these. Don't you dare, Heather. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to talk about the two elimination winners, okay? Let me start with number three, a rock and roll dance. Took home the fastest of the two limbs, cutting the mile in 147 and three last time out. Um, but interesting enough, he's the second choice in here. So who's the favorite? It's number two, Bolt the Door. Also an elimination winner. He did it in 148 and one. This horse has been super, super sharp lately though. Let me tell you, and the betters are loving him in here. Bolt the Door shown the whip going into that first turn as he has established that lead. Petrock powers up on the outside from in second there. Back to the rail third is Sweet Lou. Tracking along fourth is a rock and roll dance just off the speed back there towards the inside from in fifth now. There tracks along clear vision off stride when Sweet Lou. Sweet Lou made a mistake into the first turn. The quarter up 26 and two. And here's Bolt the Door to charge to the top in the second quarter. Pet Rock is back into second. A rock and roll dance is up on the outside. Now is Teatrix calling on him to sprint from in third, and sprint he does. Back there, fourth is Clear Vision, then racing fifth inside, foiled again. It's two more to Eric Cash Hanover, followed by Heston Blue Chip. Then it's further back inside to find Tokia. Dapper Dude and Sweet Lure the back two. Field by the half in 53 and four. Into the far turn they go. A rock and roll dance leads it. Bolt the Door, the other limb winner in the pocket spot from in second now. Clear Vision first up, driving third on his cover, foiled again. Pet Rock is locked up tight. Eric Cash Hanover sixth on the outside, seventh buried is Heston Blue Chip. Then it's further back to find a Tokyo as they race their way to three quarters. Tetrick is asking a rock and roll dance for more. Second on the outside to turn up the pressure. Clems Clear Vision three quarters of a mile and they're there in 120 and four fifth seconds. And they come off the turn and into the stretch. A rock and roll dance called on for all of his deep stretch toughness. Second on the outside comes Clear Clear Vision to challenge him now. Clear Vision's got a head up in front. A rock and roll dance battles on at the rail. A rock and roll dance comes back. Clear Vision on the outside, still with him. Clear Vision, a rock and roll dance. Clear Vision on the outside, reaching up. Clear Vision, a rock and roll dance. Pet Rock jets out of there, sets off the first teletimer in 26 and 2. Doesn't mm. keep the, the lead for long, though. Okay, he gives it up to bolt the door. And then here comes a brush from a rock and roll dance. He says, Excuse me, may I cut in? <laughs> he ends up taking the lead. Now we've got clear vision. He's saying, okay, it's now or never. I got to pull, makes his move. And there's a clear vision and a rock and roll dance going by the three-quarter pole in 120 and four. Ladies and gents, from here, it is a full-out horse race, all right? This just gets me. This is how you know you're like a total harness-raising princess. You watch a race like this, your adrenaline starts going. Okay, so, um, uh, anyway, long story short, uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, it's just too exciting, and I know, I know, I'm starting to sweat now. A rock and roll dance ends up winning by a nose, 147-2, and two, stakes record, my friends. Clear Vision does end up being second. Okay, again, I, I'm so exhausted, but I do have to mention, who is third? My boo, Foiled again. I uh, love you, baby. Foiled again at the richest pacer in harness racing history. I don't want to say foiled again is going to be in my hometown of Harrington at Harrington Raceway on Monday for the Quillen of Limbs. Wow. Yes. So I'm all worked up. All right. Whew. Now I feel like a harness princess. Okay. <laughs> also at Mohawk on Saturday in the $683,000 Metro Final for two-year-old Colt Pacers. Number three, Western Vintage with Yannick Jingra. Three to five. Number two, let's drink on it. Three to one with Jim Morrill Jr. And number five, tell it like it is. Aaron Neville, 1966, was seven to one with Ron Pierce. Here's the call. Western Vintage says, catch me if you can. Back into the pocket position, tell it like it is. Trips out. Boom, boom, Bally kill with a
the ringside seat right there from in third. Outside fourth, tough trip for the parked out attacker through a 54 and three half, and that's luck be with you. Driving on to challenge now, slipping out off the rail to pick up cover fifth there, and off stride went luck be with you. Luck be with you made a break. So to the outside fourth now, coming first up is let's drink on it. It's fifth and tip to the outside now, able to escape to the outside, comes some major beach. Further back on the outside, we go to find beat the drum. Along at the inside there is sweeping up three wide from the backfield comes winds of change and they go off a half and 54 and three and now to three quarters in 122 and two top of the stretch lead and it's western vintage coming off the turn the lead is two lengths now back into second a fully extended tell it like it is some bumping there in deep stretch and a couple of them got hooked up in deep stretch there deep stretch lead belongs to western vintage and it's western vintage boom boom valley kill powering up on the outside for filling on number one boom boom valley kill Great name for a stripper. Off at 10 to 1 with Sylvain Filiang at the money, winning by two with 115 and four. Favorite Western Vintage was second. Number 11, some major beach from the Tony Ayala stable. <laughs> Tony Alanya. Yeah, him too. It was 45 to 1 bomber <laughs> with Doug McNair. That's what I get for mentioning trainers, but I don't have to. Finished third. And now, Monday night at Mohawk again. Two divisions with $216,000 Simcoe stakes. Here's Heather with the first for three year old Trotter. Phillies. Okay, the purse is $200,000. Not only was the purse big, but the field was big too. 12 high step and lasses took the spotlight. Heavy favorite is number 11, be a magician. Um, and you think like she's totally pulled a disappearing act during the race, but poof, like a magician, here she comes out of nowhere, gets the win at 152 and 3, a stakes record with Rick Zeron in the bike for trainer. Nifty Norman shared pass, did the work on the front to a second, and Motown Muscle finished third. Next up, three-year-old facing Phillies in the spotlight at Mohawk now. Tell me, Heather, when I sing, I want some action. I want to live. I want some action. I got so much to give. I want some action. What do you think of? Well, really? Committing suicide? Oh, that was so rude. I can't believe you did that. Okay. No, I was. Okay. It was I Love the Nightlife. I got a boogie with Tim Teachert was odds on from the inside and won it easy enough in 150 flat. At number eight and Caroline is 75 to one bomber with Scott Zero and got second number five Love Canal off at 14 to one with Doug McNair got third and now we take a look at Monday's card at Tioga and first, the legendary Kane Pace. And Heather's got that for you. Okay, we have a purse of $360,000. A bunch of pacers here use their gate speed, including Captain Treacherous. But um, it's not like he moseyed around the track. Actually, there was a 23 to 1 shot who pressured him until the half. And then he, that long shot fades. Everybody else turning for home are going after Captain Treacherous. He ends up winning. He holds on. What a horse Captain Treacherous is. One 49 and 2, Tim Tietrich in the bike for trainer Tony Alanya. Word Power was second. Wake up, Peter. Another Alanya trainee finished third. You say that Alanya real easy. Okay, Monday's fifth was the $122,000 Shady Daisy for three year old Pacey Phillies. And with no I Love the Nightlife to contend with, number one, She Be Stinging with Brian Sears looks tough to beat and was bet down to three to five favoritism. Even though in her last start, the Valley Forge of Pocono, she was more like She Be Stinging. That's another story. Making an early break and getting herself distanced. But at the end it was scandalous Hanover a three to one shot with Dave Miller who got there first winning at a neck over a dead game Miss Kayla J. Fra who got hung the mile and involved in a suicide speed goal with Vicki Beach she be stinging who also got a brutal trip was two back in third time of the mile 151 flat and had the we're out of time but before we go we want to mention our Facebook contest and this week just simply go to facebook.com slash harness week go to the secret code box right there on the main page and you got to put in what word Philly not like West Philly, South Philly, <laughs> North Philly. F-I-L-L-Y. Rhymes with silly, which is what we are, and we're out of time. Yes. So check it out. You can win all kinds of great prizes. Facebook.com slash Harness Weekend for all of us here. Oh, I want to mention, Charlotte's coming back next week, and I heard on the internet she's going to be twerking Ooh. like Miley Cyrus. Ooh. I'm just saying, so you might want to tune in. I heard it on the internet. Might want to tune in. <laughs> all right, great. And for all of us here, including Blue Scasella, Charlotte McBride, who is not here, but we'll be back next week. Kelly Connors and my lovely partner, Heather by Tally, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to pick up the pace, just a little taste, and get high on harness. It's only natural. Oh, they go. Explosive pattern wins the Colonial easily. Underway.